The Popsicle Index is the percent of people in a community who believe a child can leave their home, go to the nearest place to buy a Popsicle, and come home alone safely. When I was a little girl growing up in West Philadelphia, the Popsicle Index was 100%. It was unthinkable that we couldn't run up to Spruce Street, play the pins, get a Popsicle, and come home alone at any time of day or early evening. Now, if you look at all 3,100 counties in America and in many places around the globe, what we've seen in the last 50 years is the Dow Jones Index has gone up, up, up as the Popsicle Index is going down, down, down. And when I was Assistant Secretary of Housing, after the first month, I had this very anxious feeling, and I finally realized everyone makes money from the stock market going up, and I'm constantly being lobbied by people who want their stock to go up and the Dow Jones to go up, but nobody's lobbying me to get the Popsicle Index to go up because they don't perceive it as something that makes them money. And one of the reasons I became so interested in bringing financial transparency to money by place, particularly government investment, and then community venture funds, is I wanted to have people, I wanted to give people a way where they could make money, you know, so you could make money in your 401k or your IRA in something that made the Popsicle Index go up. Because if you could create a political, a financial constituency, if you will, for the Popsicle Index, then people could make money reducing uh, energy costs, reducing, integrating new technology, making communities more wonderful, and having the Popsicle Index go up. And it's really, you know, it's, it's at that county or neighborhood level where we have to realign money with people. And so the Popsicle Index was a way for me to communicate to people, hey, you know, we need the Dow Jones and the Popsicle Index to be friends instead of a win having a win-lose relationship.